so my video cut off, but I wanted to show you where I was at on here. I've done a lot of the streets so far. Now over here it's a little bit difficult because I gotta figure out which ones are streets and which ones aren't. Now right here this is gonna be a street because it connects to this one. It's in between the Eiffel Tower and I know the Eiffel Tower you can you know see through it so I want to make sure that I do the right design on here. And then over here we got another roadway. And it's coming along and even if say there's you know one line that you're not sure what it's going to be you can always pause come back to it later you know because the color you can always find your colors you know that you had them in here and like I have this one right here Now on the Eiffel Tower, because I know that you can see through the roadway, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here yet, because somehow I have to connect this one to this, and then this one I'm pretty sure it connects over here. So I'm actually just going to color the rest of the roads in, and then I'll come back. I might do a circle like this, because there's a lot of turnarounds that they have that are showing in the roadways. And that might be what I do here to connect the roads, but I'm not sure on that yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish up these roads through here, and then we'll come back. Okay, so I decided to bring out the small one and show you the quick detail that I have to do on here. The roadway connects right through here, so I got my small one. And I'm actually connecting through the little lines to make sure everything's connected. And then in between the wording right here. It's just easier to use a smaller tip sharpie to make sure that everything goes how it's supposed to. And then on here, the road goes this way. So, just wanted to clean that up right through there a little bit. And then the tower way, you know it's going to go through here. So all I do when I want the road to come all the way through right here is I just put the purple color in the background. Oops, sorry about that. I put the purple color through the background right there so that it looks like the road's just continuing straight through here. So that when you come up this way and disconnect it, doesn't look like there's a break in it at all. And then I know it's going to go through here, so. Color it in between here real quick. And then straight through here. And then bring that up. And that's basically just how you do that. And then it'll go straight through here. I know that there's one little mark right here. It's roadway. And then I know that there's one right here as well. Because you'll always see the ones that you want to do on here. And then you just, you can touch those up. Like it's going to go through here and through here. And then just a little bit right here. So I can fix that right now. And then it stops at that building. So we're going to pause again and I'll come back. Okay, so now I have almost all of my Paris streets done. And I know purple probably isn't a street color, but when you're coloring or when you're doing your art, it's your vision. It's what you want, not what, you know, color it's supposed to be or, or what anybody's idea of right or wrong is. It's whatever you like. So on here... It looks like basically have everything I wanted to put in here. So it's a matter of, like I said, connecting the streets here, which we're going to wait on that. But so right now, this is what it looks like. So now I get to go through my colors. I'm actually leaving my purple out because I know that there's some stuff I'm going to have to decide on here. 
So when you're deciding on your Mona Lisa color, they don't actually, Sharpie does not exactly have a flesh color that you would really consider a flesh color. Or at least, if they do, I haven't found them yet, but I'm ordering more Sharpies soon, so we'll see what colors I can find. But right now, the one color that I use a lot, that's about as close as I'm actually going to get, which sometimes is hard to find. As you can see, I have a lap full of colors. I don't want Mona Lisa to look real pinkish. I just don't like that color. And I don't want her to look too yellowish because I don't like that either. So I'm going to go through my markers and then figure out that I don't have the color I want. Okay, I really don't. I don't know what happened to it. That wasn't a joke. Um, so now I'm going to decide on placing you on hold so I figure out what I did with the color I was planning on using. Okay, so just so you know, I found the color that I'm going to use. I like this one a lot. You'll see what it comes out to. But just in case I didn't find it, just so that you see, there's not like a, a shortage of markers around this house. I am set for days when it comes to markers. Alright, so this is a small one, and there's a lot of surface area, but this is the color that I like when it comes to a darker skin tone, but not too orange, not too yellow, and I like it best. So all I'm going to do is just color it. Now see, you can blend certain areas and make it darker or lighter, like if you wanted, this is just one coloring, which when it dries, it comes out to a light hue. If you want to make, say, a shadow on this side of her face, what you would do is just go in here, color it, but I want that to be shadow, so I just come back when I know it's dry or you know starting to dry and then just make it darker you just keep going back over the same area and that's what makes it darker and then you just continue with the light color just one time over will make it different than what you did on the side of the face so when that starts to dry you'll see that it looks a little bit darker on the edge right here. So we're going to pause you and get her finished.